I am thrilled that today I have been joined in the studio by Catherine Laurel Sage. Now, I first stopped by Catherine's stand at the Olympia Knitting and Stitching Show because she drew my eye by her modern take on cut work. Cut work is one of my favourites, but you've given it a very modern twist. Well, I hope so. Um, I think it was fair to say it was by accident. Um, I was looking for something new to do. Uh, I'd been asked, I was doing a, um, a course, and I was asked to put a slant, my own slant on something. And that's quite a tall order because there's so many wonderful textiles out there. How do you find something and make it your own? Mm. And it boils down to having a brainstorming session with somebody that knows you well enough. And the questions were asked, well, what do you like doing? And what are you not very good at? So what I decided was that I'd go back to my patchwork days. And I loved reverse applique when I did patchwork. Um, I quite liked layering, but that was quite difficult to do with sort of solid fabrics, which then made me look at organza fabrics, which are light and floaty. They change colour when you overlap them, and they're beautiful. The only problem is that they're terrible to use because you've got to be able to control them. Now, around about that time, um, somebody was using something called water soluble, and I played around and I learnt that I could layer up things between water soluble which would control them so that I could actually make quite flat pieces if I wanted to, as in like these pieces, um, because I quite liked the idea of curtains and things that would go in a window oh that yes. would change colour as the sun came through them, but were not solid. Because mm. I have a lot of long windows in my house oh. and I thought it would look lovely rather than net curtains yes. to have organza. Oh, wow. So that's where it really sort of started. But the other techniques that crept in very quickly was when I tried to use the organza and found that it was quite hard to keep flat. Once I'd mastered that and got my fabric back from the water soluble because I made layers of it up and in between the water soluble, it was still quite lifeless. So that's when the reverse applique came in. So what I started to do was I started to clip off areas that I felt were important to the design with my scissors. Um, it was quite fiddly getting the scissors under that mm. top layer, but you just got these little shots of colour coming through that made the work come alive. And then lastly, there was another textile artist out there that was just pioneering a soldering iron and I just had to have a fiddle with that really. And of course, that really is where the techniques come from. The wanting to use the organza, mm. having to use the water soluble to control it, adding a patchwork technique that I was quite fond of, the reverse applique, and then using the soldering iron to take out all the bits of fabric that I didn't need anymore. So you just spend your day playing? Yeah. Well, not really, because you, because you, I know you teach and everything, and you're going to do some wonderful workshops for us. But here's um, a lovely th 3D piece. Well, it's 3D in the middle, and I saw earlier that you were clipping these on like brooches. So these are removable. Yes, I'm wearing one here. So what a clever idea! You know, it, and they're great for shows and things because when you're trying to travel you yes. know you can't always I mean these things in front of us are absolutely a nightmare to travel I with imagine. I put my foot on the brake too quick and and they all end up down the front of the car with me mm. so to be able to do something that's fairly flat that I can put together when I get to a show and then disassemble and also it's my jewellery stand as well so when this is on the wall at home if I'm nipping out and I don't know what colour I'm on I go past and think oh I'll have that one today so I just take it off colour put it on. goes with my outfits and and I'm ready they're great for holding um I've got like a Scarf. pashmina super and I'm not very good at keeping it on my shoulders so you can put one of those on there the and brooches. off you go yeah and this is accessorized uh, this is also using the, um, the water soluble and, yeah. and obviously I, I suspect scraps of fabric. Yeah, scraps of fabric. Um, they're, they're much smaller sort of scraps, but exactly the same procedure done, layered. I've done the reverse applique. This is where the colours are coming through. Yeah, and, the, and then I've used the soldering solder iron. And of course, you can get lovely holes as well with the soldering yes. iron by pushing the Ooh, yeah. tip down into it. And this it. has got lovely beading on it and a beaded fringe look. I've got Gorgeous. to get the beading fix. It's, uh, I love beads. I love the way they catch the light. Yes. They are lovely. 
they are lovely. Now this one, you, it, you said, um, I just love the cat. I just <laughs> think he's gorgeous. But again, bit of bling. Um, is this all Gantt and Ernst? One looks no, more like painting. This is um, really just to show that I'm quite versatile because not only do I have the passion for the organza and I keep coming back to the organza, but because I teach, I have to do things <laughs> that other people want to do. And it's coming up with the next idea. And this was really to give the students a run into being able to use acrylic paints on plain white fabric. So okay. this is completely painted. The entire design was marked out with a pencil and then I've sat down with acrylic paint and painted all in. And then I've just stitched in detail. And, and my students quite often say to me, but you know, the paint's not within the stitching. And that's the lovely thing, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't matter, because does the it? stitching the is just emphasising the paintwork. Definitely the beauty of it. And then um, I've got these lovely books, notepads, as it were. I suspect, again, used lovely stitching on here, but using scraps? Yeah, these are, whereas the little brooches were the squares of scraps, these can be all of the bias edges, all those bits that we cut off. And I just save everything. I don't have any wastage whatsoever with my organza fabrics. Every last scrap it's is used. made Wonderful. and used. Um, and this is just, we've... I've, I've run them down in strips with the same machine. I've also used some of those program stitches yes, because look again, at those. the girls in my class have got lots of fancy sewing machines yes. and they very rarely touch these I stitches. Know. Know. So this was an exercise yep. to use up scrap but also to get them looking at those stitches. And with the lovely threads we have now, we've spoiled yeah. the choice. Oh, we? they're just fantastic, the threads. And of course, some of those threads we buy that are not very good for free motion stitching. They're ideal for doing this sort of yes. thing with. So yeah. you can use them all up. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining me today in your very busy schedule. You're and I welcome. know you're gonna, your workshops will inspire us. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for asking me to come. <laughs>